while I was getting ready to push the record button today, I got to thinking about a t-shirt I, I want to make. Uh, I was having a hard day yesterday, up here and in life. Everything was hard. And when I have days like that, I call it wrestling with snakes. Wrestling with snakes. So I think I need to make a WWS t-shirt, wrestling with snakes. Would you like a copy? Just let me know in the comments. Tell me, tell me if you'd like the WWS t-shirt. You know the kind of day I'm talking about, and we're going to talk about that today in Acts chapter 8. We're going to talk about how I got fired. Yeah, I got fired. And teleportation. Yeah, firing, teleportation, and wrestling with snakes. Oh my gosh, cash, really? Yep. So, I want to frame the talk today around the concept of rejection. Who is rejecting you? And what? What will you reject? Or who is accepting you? And what will you accept? So let's look at Acts chapter 8. I think you'll figure out what I'm talking about. It, it starts out the heading in this Bible. It says, Saul ravages the church. I don't think we have any idea how bad things got for these people. Chapter 8. And Saul approved of his execution. Excuse me, I'm going to start over. Who was executed? Stephen. They stoned him. In the last chapter, we read about the stoning of Stephen. I'm going to start all over. Acts chapter 8. <clears throat> and Saul approved of his execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentations over him. But Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the sights that he did. For unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many who had them. <clears throat> and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. But there was a man named Simon, who had previously practiced magic in the city, and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he himself was somebody great. They all paid attention to him, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the power of God that is called great. And they paid attention to him, because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip as he preached good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed, and after being baptized, he continued with Philip. And seeing signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see <clears throat> that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. 
Now when they had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all of her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch asked Philip, And the eunuch asked Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Wow! Philip, it would appear, had just been teleported somewhere, from a chariot to somewhere else. Wow! Chapter 8. This chapter starts out with this, this little piece of scripture, two verses, three and four. But Saul began ravaging the church, entering house after house, and he would drag away men and women and put them in prison. Therefore, those who had been scattered went through places preaching the word. So Paul starts turning Christians into martyrs here. Some people think that's happening now, to a lesser degree, of course, in modern times. Paul rejected this new Christian view of the world. He would not allow his mind to accept it. That mindset, that mindset is happening today. So there's some sort of dividing going on now, like it was in the times we just read about. So Saul brought huge disruptions to people's lives. He was implementing deep division. People were being divided, and it wasn't safe for the Christians to be in the city anymore. So they took their new Christian faith far and wide. When they got the boot from Saul, they put their walking boots on. So who is rejecting you? What do you reject? Or even who is accepting you? And what will you accept? So Philip and the other apostles went out to find places that would accept their message of Jesus and the resurrection. Whole cities were being converted. So this made me think of a time when everything in my life was turned upside down. I was a vocational graphic arts teacher at a juvenile correctional facility, and I got fired. I got fired. That sucked. The three guys who begged me for years to come and teach there, these three older guys, they'd been doing their job for over 30 years, the uh, principal of the school and the superintendent of the technical, uh, the vocational training department, they all asked me to come and teach. But the same year, they all three retired. And the guess who became my boss? 
the one guy who couldn't stand me at all. So shortly thereafter, he fired me. But he didn't just fire me. He fired most of the vocational teachers. He had his own agenda. I just happened to be the first. It was really disruptive. So within a couple of years, I was no longer raising a young family in a paid-for house in a small town. I was divorced. I was trying to keep the family together in a big city. Talk about disruption. So through all the unsettling changes, my faith was really tested. I can say that today, now, it's deeper than ever. We can see that happening in the book of Acts. Disruption. They had to choose to go deeper into their faith or walk away from it. For some, it would mean life and death. So what's it mean for us today? Fire all the Christians? Or is it, Christian, fire thyself. Depart. You can get run out, or you can run out on your own and go somewhere else. So the Christians had to decide, do we stay or do we leave? So now going through several phases of life, I'm into a new phase. So my work now has me in an interesting time and place. My work covers nearly 10,000 square miles. And I know almost every road in this whole area. I serve a very large rural area in a couple of states. And I also work in one of the largest metro areas in the U.S. So I meet immigrants every day. I work with farmers every day. I've been in homes of people of every income and occupation. My customers range from millionaires with large real estate portfolios to bankers and business owners. And it includes some of the poorest among us who are living entirely on government subsidies. So I see many people's lives in the metro and in the rural area. And there's a dividing going on. You can see it. It's, this divide is happening in numerous ways. There's a physical divide where people are moving from one area to another, one part of the world to another, from the city to the country. There's a spiritual divide happening. People are growing closer to God or they're growing further away. There's an ideological divide. Don't we all see that every day? Left, right, red, blue. Uh, there's the ideological divide on our college campuses. We can see that division in the headlines every day. The familial divide. Families are being divided. Some are growing closer in faith and some are, some are walking away. The cultural divide. The cultural divide. Many parents feel like their culture has left them and is trying to take their kids from them. A lot of people believe that right now. And they're making changes accordingly. So... Some of the people in my own life that are normally closest to me, I joke that I can only talk to them about puppy dogs or the weather. If I talk about faith, current events, or politics, I get blocked. I get shut down or canceled. Um, so this has me thinking about how do we handle rejection and what will we reject? So this is a time of dividing. But could it also be a time of uniting? I want you to think about this. Faith in Jesus helps us reconcile all these different areas in which we are dividing. It helps us reconcile the physical divide, the spiritual divide, the ideological divide, the fa family divides going on, the cultural divides. Faith in Jesus. I believe the most united places, the most united times, the most united cultures and families in recent history, have been places where Jesus has been the center of attention. If you want to argue about that with me, I'll argue with you. The disciples went out when the world was being divided, and they changed it. How did they change it? They changed it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Reread this chapter. Read it. The Holy Spirit is heavy wherever there's change. 
I think that could be happening again. So the question is, will people like you, people like me, believe that God is able to pluck people from darkness? Do we believe that? Will we act on it? Can he redeem, can God redeem the destruction that's being caused by all these divisions? Can he? Do you believe it? Verse 30, Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you are reading? Then Philip opened his mouth and began, and beginning from this scripture, he preached Jesus to him. Philip went to places where there were receptive ears and started preaching. He said, do you know what you're reading? I think there's a lot of people who know a bit about God, but they don't know God on a personal level. I think that's at the heart of a lot of this divide. I don't think the church is doing a good job of giving us that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, with Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to step it up. So let's copy Philip. Let's go talk to this lost generation. Let's ask them, do you understand? Do you understand what you're reading? Let's help them understand the love of Jesus. Now we've got to get ourselves in the Word of God and everybody around us. I think that would change the world. So in the last verse, Philip is teleported from a chariot to another city. Wouldn't that be cool? What if, will God do that with you? What do you think? It could happen. Bring glory to God today. I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.